What is going on guys? Today we are going to be going over how to make a simple financial model in Excel. And for this model we are going to be forecasting out an income statement over the next three years. If I scroll down here you can see we have our income statement. This is our historical data and based off of this data we are able to forecast out the next three years. Up here we have a list of assumptions and if I were to change these assumptions you can see how that would affect our income statement right here. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump in how to make this financial model. Okay, so I have a clean Excel workbook open and the first thing that we need to do is we need to put down our historical data over the past three years. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right here and I'm going to merge these cells together with this button here. And what I'm gonna type out is just historicals. And this is gonna be our historical data and we want data from 2018, 2019, and 20. 20. And if we come over here to the side, what we're going to need is we need a list of our units sold. We need to know the price. And based off of this, we will be able to find our revenue. And if I hit Command B because I'm on Mac, it will bold out our revenue tab. So let's go ahead and list the amount of units sold that we have for each of these years. So we'll say for 2018, we sold 600 units at a price of $50. We can say for the next year we sold 642 units at a price of $52 and the next year we sold 694 units at a price of $52 once again. Now wherever we can we want to add a formula so that we can automate this income statement. So what we want to do is we're going to do the equal sign and we're going to multiply 600 times 50 and when I hit enter now I can just drag this over and we will automatically have our revenue pulled. So now we need to see what our cost per unit was. So let's go ahead and jump down a row and we'll just type out cost per unit. And below that, we are gonna list out COGS, which stands for cost of goods sold. And again, if I push Command B on that, it will bold that out. And so we'll say for 2018, our cost per unit was $24. Next year we'll say 26 and the next year we will say it was 28. And so we can calculate our cost of goods sold with a formula and we're going to take our cost per unit and multiply that by the amount of units we sold. And I'll hit enter and again this is a formula so I can just drag this over and it will automatically pull our cost of goods sold for the other years. So now let's go ahead and jump down again and we need to list off some of our fixed and variable costs like our salaries and wages. So we can say that it was $8,000 for 2018 and let's go ahead and say it jumped up $200 a year each of the following years. Now we wanna know what our lease was and we'll say maybe there was like a three year lease for the same price all three years. Um, we can say we had some marketing expenses and maybe that's $5,000 each year as well. And then we'll say we have some insurance expenses. Let's see if I can spell it right. And we can say that insurance increases slightly each year. And then we can just have a spot where we list any of our other expenses. And we'll say that was just $200 each year. And so based off of this, we can now get our operating expenses. And I'm going to go ahead and push Command B on that again to bold that. Let's go ahead and drag this column if I double click on it. And so we're going to use the sum formula in order to get our operating expenses. So I'm going to do equals sum. And then what you can do is you can highlight this entire row and it will add all of these values. I'll hit enter. It's a formula, so I'll drag it over. So now we have our revenue, our cost of goods sold, and our operating expenses. So the last thing before I make my income statement is I need to know our tax rate. So I'm just going to type out taxes and we'll say it was 35% each year. So now we're ready to start building out our income statement based off of our prior data. So we'll come down here just a little bit and again we're going to list off 2018, 2019, and 2020. And the first thing that we need is we need to pull our revenue into our income statement. So this will be a formula. So we're just going to add an equal sign. We'll scroll up and make this equal to our revenue in 2018. 
and we can just drag this over and have our revenue for the other years. And now we need to know our cost of goods sold. So again, this will be a formula. We'll make this equal to our cost of goods sold here. And we can drag this over once again. And now that we have our revenue and cost of goods sold, we can now calculate our gross profit. And our gross profit is just gonna be our revenue minus our cost of goods sold. I'll hit enter on this and I will drag it over once again. So now that we have our gross profit listed, we're gonna come below this and we are gonna list off all of our expenses. And if we actually come up here, we can just copy and paste this right here underneath our expenses. Then I want this to be a formula because we wanna use a formula wherever possible. So I'm gonna make this equal to our salaries and wages here. I'll hit enter. We can drag this over and then we can actually drag it down as well. And you'll see that this data matches all of our data right here. So if we come underneath other, now we're ready to list off our total expenses. And we are just gonna use the equals sum formula and we are gonna highlight all of these values here and hit enter. And we can now see our total expenses for 2018. And when we drag this over, we have expenses for all three years. Now that we have our total expenses and our gross profit, we can now calculate our operating income. And all of our operating income is gonna be, it's gonna be our gross profit minus our total expenses. And I will just drag this over here. And now we have all of these values. And the last thing we need to take out is our taxes. And we know our tax rate was 35%. So all we're gonna do is equals, we're gonna take our operating income and multiply it by our tax rate. And we'll hit enter. And now we can see exactly how much we paid in taxes over these three years. So now we're finally ready to see our net income, which is what we have been working towards. And our net income is just gonna be our operating income minus our taxes. And I'll drag this over. So now we have our net income for our historical data. So now let's jump back up here to the top and we can begin creating our three year forecast. So if we jump right here, again, we're gonna come over here and merge and let's go ahead and just title this forecasts. And in order to make our forecast, we are actually gonna need to make a few assumptions. So I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing and I'm gonna type out assumptions. And the assumptions we need to make is what our sales growth will be. We wanna know what the price growth will be. And we also wanna know what inflation will look like over the next three years. So I'm gonna double click here to give this some space. And underneath sales growth, we'll say that sales growth is gonna be about 3% over the coming years. We'll say that our price growth will be maybe 2% and we'll say that inflation will be about 4% and I'll hit enter. So based off this, we are ready to start making our forecast for 2021, 2022 and 2023. And for our units sold, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the amount of units we sold in 2020 and we are gonna multiply this by what our sales growth assumption is gonna be. So for that, we're gonna do one plus our sales growth assumption right here. And we need to anchor this sales growth down so that we can use it as a formula and drag it over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add dollar signs in front of our sales growth here. So when I hit enter, we can now see exactly how many units we expect to sell in 2021. And when I drag this over to 2022 and we look at this formula, we can see that 2022 is referring to the amount of units we sold in 2021, and it's still multiplying by our sales growth. And if we drag it over to 2023, we can see that it's doing the exact same thing. So now we know exactly how many units we expect to sell over the next three years. And for our price, we're gonna do almost the same thing. We're gonna take our price in 2020, and we are gonna multiply it by one plus our price growth. And again, we need to anchor down our price growth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna add dollar signs in front of it. And when I drag this formula over, we can now see how our price will grow over the next three years. And based off of this data, we can now calculate our revenue over the next three years. So we're gonna do equals and we're gonna take the amount of units we sold 
and we are going to multiply this by our price and hit enter. So now we can see exactly how much revenue we expect to have over the next three years. So if we jump down to cost per unit, we're going to do something similar. We're going to take our cost per unit in year 2020 and we are going to multiply this by one plus whatever our inflation rate is going to be. So we're going to choose 4%, which is our inflation rate assumption. And again, we're going to want to anchor this down. So I'm going to add a dollar sign and hit enter. And if I drag this over, we can see exactly how much we expect to pay cost per unit over the next three years. And so for our cost for goods sold, all we're going to do is we're going to take our cost per unit and we're going to multiply it by our amount of units we expect to sell. I'll hit enter and I'll drag this over. And if we highlight this, we can make this turn into just two decimals. And so now we're ready to jump down to our salaries and wages. And we'll say that in this scenario, our salaries and wages is going to increase along with inflation. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to take our salaries and wages in 2020, and we're going to multiply this by one plus our inflation rate. And again, we're going to put dollar signs in front of our inflation rate and hit enter. And when I drag this over, we can now see how much we expect to pay in salaries and wages over the next three years. We'll say that our lease is consistent and it's gonna stay the same, so that will be a fixed cost. We'll say the same thing with marketing. For insurance, it looks like it's going up about $10 a year, so we will say consistent with that and we'll say it's gonna be whatever we paid in 2020 plus $10 and hit enter. And when I drag this formula over, you can see it's still increasing at a rate of $10 a year. And for our next three years for other expense, we will just say it stays consistent at $200. And we will say that our tax rate stays consistent at 35%. So now we are ready based off of this data to build out our income statement over the next three years. So we wanna see 2021, 2022, and 2023. And for our revenue, again, this is just gonna be a formula. So we're gonna do equals whatever our revenue is here and hit enter and we can drag this over. Our cost of goods sold will do equals. We'll refer back to our cost of goods sold here and hit enter and we will drag this over. And now we can calculate our gross profit which is gonna be our revenue minus our cost of goods sold. And I'll hit enter and drag this over. And now we wanna get all of our expense data. So we'll come over here and we will pull that in by dragging this over and then dragging this down. And we don't wanna pull this. So now we wanna calculate our total expenses. So we actually already have our formula here. So if we drag over our formula, we can see exactly what our total expenses were for these future three years. And based off of this, we can calculate our operating income, which is a formula. We can drag this over again. We can do the same thing with our tax formula and we can even do the same thing with our net income formula. And this is why it's so important to make sure you keep everything a formula. So, okay, we have actually already created our three year forecast for our income statement. So the last thing that we need to do is we just need to format this in a way that looks visually pleasing. So there are a couple of quick adjustments we can make to make this look better. So let's go ahead and come up here and we can just type out income statement and hit enter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this entire income statement here. And if we come up here, we can give this outer borders. And what I'm gonna do as well is I'll come here and give this top row a border. And we will do the same thing for our gross profit as well as our total expenses line. We can give these outer borders. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for our net income line as well. And Let's bold this, I'm just gonna push Command B since I'm on Mac, total expenses, Command B, and let's go ahead and do the same thing for our revenue. Now let's go ahead and come up here and we will bold out income statement, and let's go ahead and bold these values here as well. We can do the same thing for our years, and we want our forecast to send out from our historical data. So what we might wanna do is we'll come up here and we can add a thick outer border and let's go ahead and add some color to these as well so that it stands out just a little bit more. 
So if we come up here, we can see we have a lot of options for different colors. Maybe we want to use orange for our data here. So I'll use a lighter orange for our actual data. And for our forecast, let's go ahead and use a different color. Maybe we want to use a kind of light green color. And for our actual data, we'll use a lighter green. So you can see this is a great way to start to make your data stand out just a little bit more. And if we come up here to the top, we can do something similar. Let's go ahead and add outer borders to this as well. And we can add that same color scheme to it once again. And let's go ahead and change the way that our assumptions look. We can give this borders as well. And we can make our assumptions. Let's say we want to make it, we can make it blue. And since our income statement is based off of our assumptions data, one of the changes we might want to make is changing the font size of our assumptions data. So let's go ahead and make this a dark blue so that we know that this is data that we can change and it will affect our income statement. So for example, let's say we want to change our sales growth to 5%, our price growth to 3 and inflation to 2. When I hit enter, you can see that all of this data has changed accordingly based off of these assumptions. So now what I want to go ahead and do is let's highlight this data and let's put this in an accounting format by hitting the dollar signs. So now we can see as a dollar gain how much our net income is. And we need to make this adjustment to our assumptions up here. So let's highlight this data and we will add a dollar sign. And one of the cool tools that Excel has built in is if we come up here to themes on page layout, we can completely change the way that our spreadsheet looks. And so based off this, you can just kind of pick one that you think looks best for your spreadsheet. And so with that being said, our financial model in Excel is complete. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.